What's going on, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast. I'm your host, Max Torres, publisher and lead editor of Ducks Digest, covering the Oregon Ducks for Sports Illustrated on Fan Nation. Welcome into a Christmas Eve episode of the podcast. Um, you know, just because we're around the holiday season doesn't mean that the news is slowing down at all. And we got a, a couple headlines to get into here uh, on Friday as we head into the holiday. The uh, biggest one uh, that we want to lead the show with today is Oregon veteran offensive lineman Male Sala Amavai Laulu has announced that he will be returning to Oregon in 2022. This news coming after he initially announced that he would be declaring for the 2022 NFL draft and that the Alamo Bowl would be his last game in the green and yellow playing for the Ducks. So this is a, a huge, huge announcement for Oregon. Uh, obviously for the, uh, the Alamo Bowl, it's good to have him uh, as a, a big piece on the offensive line. But looking ahead to next season, that's obviously super relevant as well. He uh, had a post on Twitter, uh, and I can just read that now so you can kind of get his words behind the uh, decision. He said, after further discussions with head coach Dan Lanning, J.R. Mawala, and the new Oregon staff, my eyes have been open to a brighter future. Their support has been unreal. I anticipated foregoing my senior season and entering the NFL draft, but have decided to return to Duck Nation to play my senior season. A bright future requires patience, greater skill development from a new tier of leaders, and a focused mindset. I am more driven and focused than ever and dedicated to turning to tuning up the final pieces. I'm excited to be part of a new dynasty under Coach Lanning and the new Oregon staff. Solid a beast returns in green and yellow and ready to finish what I started. Last one, best one. Hashtag AG2G, all glory to God. Hashtag Go Ducks. Hashtag Solid a Beast. So this is obviously pretty big for a number of reasons. Um, I think just looking into next season and kind of what the picture looks like for this Oregon offense, you're obviously going to have Sala. He spent a majority of the 2021 season main the right side of that offensive line, uh, usually at the right tackle spot, but occasionally getting some work at guard. Um, he worked alongside Ryan Walk who was the right guard for much of the season. And then he also worked alongside Steven Jones, who uh, really solidified himself in that lineup after Walk got hurt against Washington. So assuming everybody comes back uh, other than George Moore next year, who uh, who was in his last year of college eligibility, they're going to have to fill that left tackle spot, um, which has honestly been filled by uh, TJ Bass for, for much of the, the end of the season, kind of going down the home stretch. We saw Bass getting a lot of work there at uh, left tackle. But just as we're kind of looking at the picture, we're still waiting decisions from a variety of, of names here going into uh, next season. Um, my sister's dog just uh, broke into the podcast studio here. Um, so that happened yesterday. Um, but bear with me. So, yeah, we're looking at, at next year's group of offensive linemen, and, and it's looking like it'll be Forsyth who announced that he's going to be returning. Bass, we're still waiting for an official word from him. Walk, waiting for a word from him. Um, and then Stephen Jones as well. So I think that this is just really big because you want to have that continuity along the front. That's obviously just an added bonus. But this 2022 class, you know, when Mario Cristobal uh, announced that he was going to be leaving to take the head job at Miami, a lot of these guys in the 2022 class, particularly along the offensive line, uh, decommitted from Oregon. You're looking at Cameron Williams and Kelvin Banks, two really – uh, solid Texas prospects that ended up flipping to Texas uh, from Oregon after they ended up uh, decommitting. Um, let's see. And then you also have Dave Uli, who uh, is still committed to Oregon, uh, but it looks like he's um, he, he didn't sign. So I think that, that that's one of those good decisions um, or good news rather, where someone is going to wait, still stay committed to Oregon, but wait. And that still leaves the door open for the Oregon staff to, to kind of get in the door and build that relationship. Like I've said, uh, Oregon reportedly uh, eyeing Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line coach Adrian Clem to uh, fill that uh, that spot and then man the offensive line under Dan Lanning in 2022. So um, that's obviously a good name for for him to to prioritize as Yuli is still committed. They, the Ducks were able to sign Wooten during the early signing period. Um, so I think this is big because we have seen some attrition in the 2022 class for Oregon on the recruiting trail at offensive line. So it's, it's good to have a uh, big solid back. And then also another sub point for this is just the, 
how good is it going to be for a quarterback to have this solid of a, of a offensive line? You know, like I said, I don't want to repeat myself too many times. We got to see who's officially going to be coming back. But as of right now, assuming that um, everyone's going to be back for, for next year, aside from George Moore, just whether it be Bo Nix, whether who just uh, announced he's transferring to Oregon, whether it be Ty Thompson, Robbie Ashford, Jay Butterfield, any of those guys, it's really going to help them, I think, uh, next season to, to get comfortable behind a, a really established and, and veteran group of offensive linemen. So that's just another benefit from this all, uh, from Sala coming back. And then one of the other storylines that I wanted to get into, uh, former Oregon defensive tackle Jason Jones has announced that he uh, is committing. He has committed to Auburn. Um, Jones entered the transfer portal on December 15th. And uh, it didn't take him long to to find a new home. You know, he had a pretty pretty decent uh, list of offers. You know, obviously Auburn hopped into the fold. Um, Miami was another school that uh, that offered him. And we also saw Georgia Tech get in on the uh, running for him. Trying to pull up on my screen here some of the other schools that uh, tried to get involved um, before he ultimately ended up committing to Auburn. We saw Nebraska. Uh, Oklahoma State, so he hit North Carolina. He had some pretty, pretty good offers, but um, you know, this was one of those guys. Once he entered the portal, that you were hoping that Dan Lanning could uh, convince to come back and uh, stay at Oregon. But um, that was the other thing that I, I wanted to talk about with Sala. I forgot to mention just to wrap that one up is that's a recruiting win for Dan Lanning, being able to bring him uh, back to Eugene for next year. Uh, and then this comes after uh, Seven McGee announced that he would not be entering the portal after talking with Landing and Don Johnson um, after initially saying that he was going to enter the portal after his true freshman season. So um, two big recruiting wins. A lot of people are talking about how important it is for, for Landing to kind of get some steam on the pick up some steam on the 2022 cycle. But, um, you know, you got to you got to have those guys. You got to win over the guys that are already in Eugene first, because those guys are already on your roster and and obviously have the best chance to uh, make an impact for him next season. So that was really big. And then obviously we saw the seven guys that signed. Anthony Jones was one of those guys that signed during the early signing period, uh, flipping from Texas. Um, I actually just had him on the podcast yesterday. Really cool one-on-one -on -one interview. So go check that out either on YouTube or on Spotify or Apple Podcasts if you haven't listened to that yet. But I think this Jones, the loss of Jones really hurts the Ducks just because he was really that SEC type of defensive lineman that the Ducks really haven't seen much of, um, you know, since coming, since, uh, you know, Mario Cristobal took over before Cristobal, I should say. They didn't really have these kind of big SEC style defensive linemen before Cristobal took over. And, and I think that Jones was really starting to just find his stride, you know, 13 games. He played in all 13 games in the 2021 season after uh, redshirting in 2020. I think his, his stats were something along the lines of um, he had one and a half sacks as a, um, as a freshman in this season. Let's see, I'm pulling up the, the story that I wrote so I can make sure I have accurate numbers for you guys. So it was um, played in all 13 games, um, recorded five solo tackles, 19 total tackles, and one and a half sacks that came against Colorado and Washington State. So it felt like he was just breaking through and he was rotating in um, behind Popo Amavai. Uh, who's another guy that they're they're waiting to uh, you know get official word that he's coming back. It's kind of weird because I feel like now that the bowl season, you know, we're five days away from the Alamo Bowl here. Um, interim head coach Brian McClendon saying that they're not expecting any more opt outs at this point. That's when we talked to him back on Monday, so probably safe to say. But you know, until we really get through the season, we're not going to know. But Pope Amavai has been doing really well, and and it feels like Jones was doing a good job finding his uh, moments to contribute. And then you're looking at the, uh, the the defensive line for 2022. You have guys like uh, Popo, if he's back, Brendan Dorless, if he's back, Christian Williams, Keanu Williams, Keon Ware Hudson, who got dinged up uh, towards the end of the 2021 season and, and hasn't played since I think it was, and he got hurt in the, in the Washington game. Um, so that's when he originally got hurt. But then the Ducks also have uh, three commits in the 2022 class along the defensive line. Uh, you have Ben Roberts from Salt Lake City, who signed during the early signing period. Sir Mel's teammate of Anthony Jones, who I just talked about, he also signed during the early signing period. And then Grayson Halton, who remains committed from San Diego on the defensive line, but did not sign during the uh, early signing period. And then while we're talking about the defensive line, we had another official hire um, on Thursday 
That is uh, former Nebraska defensive line coach Tony Tuioti is going to be the next defensive line coach for Oregon in 2022. So kind of indicates that Joe Salavea is is uh, probably not going to be retained by Dan Landing. He could be on his way out um, looking for a new job. So I think that, you know, Jones was, even though he didn't have a huge impact this year, I feel like he was one of those guys that really got some valuable reps and, and could have been a super consistent contributor next year. So that, that one kind of stings a little bit uh, seeing that he's going to be taking his talents back to his home state of Alabama. He's a Calera, Alabama native and uh, playing for Brian Harson and the Auburn Tigers. And then just a small Alamo bowl update. Um, if you guys didn't see the story or the tweets that I had, um, from earlier this week, when we talked to Brian McClendon, I talked about Ryan walk earlier on the offensive line, both he and Steve Stevens, uh, were not practicing as of Monday and it's not looking like they're going to be, uh, too likely to play in the Alamo bowl. Uh, McClendon was saying that they're questionable at best. And that is another designation that, uh, kind of goes directly with, uh, Bennett Williams, one of the star safeties for Oregon who, uh, got hurt just before the Stanford game. He's the one that McClendon says, you know, of the guys that are fighting back from injury, working their way back from injury, that could be in line to contribute uh, in the Allen Bowl and help out. So he's also questionable at best as of right now. And then some of the other guys that we're still waiting on, uh, you know, official word from as far as the NFL draft goes or if they're going to be back. So we have um, talked about TJ Bass, Ryan Walk, CJ Verdell, and Travis Dye, both of the two star running backs for Oregon. Uh, tight end, defensive end, uh, DJ Johnson, and as well as Brandon Dorless. So those are some names to keep an eye on here as we work our way through the Alamo Bowl. And then um, when we can officially turn the page onto 2022 um, and then look kind of what's coming our way there. So I think that that's what's so weird about this Alamo Bowl, right? I was thinking about writing a story about this or maybe doing a separate video on it, but there's definitely a, it's, it's definitely a, a good game to be playing in. And McClendon said it himself, you know, you're not, you're not, uh, I think he said something on the lines that you're not playing chopped liver. It's, it's Oklahoma. It's a blue blood program. So both programs are in transition. Um, I know that they both had higher aspirations than finding themselves in the Alamo bowl, but it's still an opportunity for the, or for Oregon to uh, go and win 11 games. So it's a game that you still got to show up for and a win's a win at the end of the day. So hopefully, uh, you know, duck fans are, are hoping that they can get that one done. And then just a little recruiting note that I wanted to add here as we wind down on this episode of the ducks dish podcast, Five-star 2023 uh, Bishop Gorman wide receiver Zachariah Branch has committed to USC. So uh, Lincoln Riley and the Trojans picking up some more steam on the recruiting trail um, and pushing into 2023. That was something that I said the Ducks had needed to do, still need to do for, for quite a bit now. They had a really solid 2022 class before Crystal Ball left. And uh, I think that they weren't satisfied with that. You know, Obviously, you want to keep adding to the 22 class, but push the really, really good teams, push ahead into 2023 and we're seeing the benefits of having an elite recruiter in Lincoln Riley already paying off for USC. For those of you that don't know, uh, Branch's young, uh, older brother, rather Zion Branch, who's a safety at Bishop Gorman in Las Vegas, a uh, really elite powerhouse program. He committed, um, to the Trojans during the early signing period. So that, uh, Zion Branch talented 2022 safety in the fold for USC. And then here on Christmas Eve, Zachariah is following in his footsteps and in looking in the 2023 uh, class um, USC has the top pack 12 class uh, according to the 247 sports composite rankings. Uh, so ducks, you know, obviously there's plenty of work to be done in the 2022 class and that 23 class will really be the first class of all of Dan Lanning's guys, right? You know, there's guys that crystal ball recruited in the 2022 class that Lanning's ultimately going to end up uh, signing has already signed. But that 2023 class is going to be the first one where you can really gauge, you know, how strong of a recruiter that Lanning is. And he's already making some big moves. Uh, and then another hire that was official yesterday that I think has some big recruiting implications, Demetrius Martin. Uh, Demetrius Martin comes over from Colorado where he coached cornerbacks. He's going to serve as the cornerbacks coach for Oregon, as well as the pass game coordinator. And that dude's got major ties in the uh, Southern California area. So these battles between USC and Oregon are going to be pretty cool to watch here unfold in the future, but I uh, wanted to wrap that up with some recruiting notes, just a, a quick little episode for you guys here on uh, Christmas Eve, wherever you guys are listening, hope you're uh, with your loved ones and you guys are being safe. 
having a happy holiday, whatever, uh, whatever holiday is that you celebrate. If you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. Got that coming up tomorrow on Saturday. And then uh, make sure you guys stay tuned into Ducks Digest for the latest Alamo Bowl coverage. We'll be covering that game. And then uh, looking to ramp up recruiting here as uh, Lanny tries to finish strong with that February signing period. So uh, if you guys aren't already, it's really important to stay locked into the social media channels so that I, I uh, you know, tweet stuff out there and get that information out as quickly as possible before I can hop on one of these recordings. So make sure you're following me on Twitter at mtourissports. And uh, also go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're watching the podcast on YouTube, that's awesome. At Oregon Football Max Taurus is where you can find me. Go ahead and give us some positive reviews on Apple Podcasts and Spotify where you can find the Ducks Dish Podcast. And um, yeah, that's all we got for this one, guys. Make sure to stay tuned in to DucksDigest.com for the latest Oregon Ducks news, coverage, and analysis. That's all we got for this episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast. Take care, you guys. We'll see you in the next episode.